Did you know that there was a big silent bang just a few decades ago? No, no, it's not the Hulk, certainly not radioactive, and it wasn't dangerous either. Let me clear the air for you. This series is all about telling you more about EVs, electric vehicles, their ecosystem, why they're important and why you should care. So let's get cracking with our very first episode. It was in the first half of the 19th century that the thought of an electric machine was born. Scotsman Robert Anderson's motorized carriage was built sometime between 1832 and 39. Batteries were not yet rechargeable, so it was more parlor trick. Look, no horse, no ox, yet it moves, than a transportation device. But the arrival of rechargeable batteries in 1859 could be considered the marker of cars with an electric battery becoming viable. Do you know though what the first electric car was called? It had a mammal's name attached to it. A scary one at that. It was called Electrobat. Bat could also mean battery, by the way. Now, you have to admit that it was an effort far ahead of its times. And while that was the start, there were genuine efforts made by many car makers like Studebaker or even old man Ferdinand Porsche to give the world an electric version of the car. But the failure could have come because of a lack of resources or even interest from the public. Because, mind you, vehicles that ran on fossil fuel were selling like hot cakes back then. They were cheaper too and much faster. Also, they didn't run out of electricity and leave you stranded in a place. And thanks to them, you could keep moving. A sentiment that can be well identified with what we now call the range anxiety species. Back to the story though. Experiments continued. Now I say experiments because, well, this was the time for many iterations of the electric car. They were more like ugly iterations, if you get my drift. I mean, look at that. We know cars like this exist in our current market too. Now this was called the Delta Experimental Car. And that boxy design sure doesn't help aerodynamics. It's also angular. And you all know me very well now to understand that safety means a lot to me. So tell me truly, do you really see this at all ever passing a crash test? Tell me in the comment section below. Now the Delta was really heavy, 1,043 kilograms and 40% of that weight was the battery. Now you know what the rest of it was worth. But the fact remains that it could go 64 kilometers on an all electric charge it was one of the biggest tech advancements of the 20th century. That was not enough though, because the Uggos kept coming. The 1974 City car, it actually went into production. 4,444 units were made between 1974 and 77. And it came with a lead acid battery with three to six BHP on offer. Design wise, it just kind of ends abruptly. And for that futuristic look, it looks more like something that you'd relate to the capsule of a rocket. So it fails to achieve that level of sentiment that you have through design. But it doesn't end there. I mean, check out this Chevy Chevette in its electric form. They called it the Electrovet. No, I mean, it was never a really good looking car to begin with. So why make an electric version of an ugly car? But you see, Chevy was being smart. It was checking whether a petrol or diesel model, that design could also be used for building EVs, using the same platform, the same panels and assembly line. Think like that and you'll understand why this Electrovet was a smart move. Now I'm so glad though that these experiments came to an end. Because a few experiments later, car makers finally started to say to themselves, let's make an EV look like a car and not like an experiment. Out went the outlandish, ugly ones, and in came the gorgeous looking future modes of transportation. That last car you saw on the screen blew us all away. But there was another car being developed at the same time that was showcased. 
And it was not the company's first EV, by the way. The first Kia EV was the Vesta, or Besta as the Koreans called it. It came out in the 1980s and was not exactly a production car, more like a prototype. But we got a glimpse of it for the first time as an EV at the 1986 Asian Games. And you also saw it again at the 88 Seoul Olympics, where it was used for live broadcasting since the organizers needed a silent vehicle for camera-mounted telecasts. Rudimentary times for telecasts back then. It wasn't commercially available, but it laid a sort of a foundation, a really strong one for other cars from the company's portfolio, like the Sportage EV in 1999. And then this one, the Ray EV. Though it's kind of boxy in the way it looks, really pretty tall, it was designed specifically for the urban market. The Ray EV could do 138 kilometers on a single charge thanks to its 16.4 kilowatt hour battery pack and it punched out 67 bhp. That's a horsepower figure similar to many petrol or diesel hatchbacks at the time. But the learnings that Kia got from the Ray are significant and that's how in 2014 the company launched this, the Soul EV. Now it's a bit of a boxy design but kind of like an SUV, more like a hatch. I got a chance to drive its second generation just a few years back. And that second generation Soul EV also won 2020 World Urban Car at the World Car Awards. But the Soul wasn't the only EV back then. There were many other players rushing into this market meanwhile. The race to the top spot was not about sales, it was more to do with developing a product that was sustainable and more importantly really consumer focused. And this is where the research and development started to hit a new peak. Everyone wanted a piece of the EV pie. It was the Everest everyone wanted to climb. No wonder spends on EV R&D just skyrocketed for many vehicle makers over these past five years. And of course, these budgets also took into consideration the tech that all these cars get powered by. I'm not just talking about the battery tech, it's also about the whole visual experience all the in-car tech as well. No wonder then that companies like Google, Apple, Sony, and many other Chinese companies as well, like Xiaomi, got involved immediately. All these tech giants from Silicon Valley and beyond all wanted a piece of the EV action, and they had the budgets for it too. Sony, in fact, surprised everyone with the Vision S at CES in 2020. It took everyone by surprise. It looked every bit a car really attractive, promised so much. And then we all thought Sony is going to go out with this on its own, make its own car. But in 2022, it entered into a joint venture with Honda. And the Japanese powerhouse has pushed out the Ophila brand. Now, pre-orders for these cars have begun in early 2025. Deliveries are promised next year. Let's hope they keep that promise. Meanwhile, Xiaomi really pushed ahead with the SU7 or SU7 as the Chinese like to call it. And it did this without the help of any of the established OEMs. That's pretty commendable because trust me, making a car is a big investment. You might think that they're just making a big gadget and they're used to making gadgets. In a way that's true, but car construction is way more complicated and it's also investment heavy for anyone to really take it lightly. Having said that, but Xiaomi has sold over 150,000 units of the Su7, all of them in China, but with a clear hope of selling 300,000 units by the end of 2025. Imagine, once they go global. Watch out, original equipment makers. Yep, the OEMs know that there is this threat. But while the focus for these tech superpowers was EV, car makers, in the meanwhile, put their focus on other vehicles as well, like plug-in hybrids. Kia had the Nero and the Optima, which did really well in global markets and are becoming increasingly relevant again. Plugins and regular hybrids as a whole. This propelled sales and has added to sustainable mobility. Global markets were ready to build a sustainable society. Countries like China, the United States, Germany, and even countries like Norway all responded to the call of a greener future by providing incentives, of course, to buyers and also to manufacturers. Other countries had to respond, and that's where we've seen even India coming up with plans to sell only EVs by a particular date. Now, we all know how many times that date has actually changed, but nonetheless, it has sparked the EV-olution. 
And now we have car makers investing specifically in India for EVs. Kia has announced a 2,000 crore rupee investment for R&D here. And there are others who are outlaying their budgets to make electric vehicles in India for the globe. So yes, there are going to be more EVs coming to India and also going out from India, which are going to cater to global markets. And they're already based on these dedicated EV platforms. Something which will amp up the game for many players. I want you to know more about that because it's a really significant step towards the EV path ahead. So I will be telling you more about it in our next episode, which will be dedicated to it. But you know what? The change has already begun. The question is, are you ready for it? <laughs>